Good evening, dear developers. Добрый вечер, for those who speak Russian. Good welt, for those who speak Norwegian. Um, my name is Maxim. I came to you from uh, island of Phuket. <laughs> Uh, not, not really. I'm there for the moment with my family for vacation, but I live in Oslo in Norway. It's way more colder country than uh, Thailand. I know that you folks uh, on your holidays go to cooler places, but we go to warmer places. And, uh, and this is my third visit to Thailand, and I enjoy your country so much. And uh, so, so lovely country, so awesome, it's so nice people. I truly respect your country and its citizens. So, hail to you folks. You are, you are great people, you are a great uh, nation and great country. Uh, before we start, let me say a couple of thank yous. First, thank you for every one of you for dedicating this evening for this meetup. I know this is like uh, pre-holidays, um, um, stuff you can be very busy preparing for new year for this uh, like uh, uh, general new year and, and one of your of your two new years um, second thanks goes to our beautiful sponsors first to KID, this uh, awesome location for thanks for having us here and um, other beautiful companies for helping us with organizing everything, uh, with uh, helping um, to my travel uh, to this um, place. And of course, uh, thank you very much, James and the uh, co-organizers for making this happen at all. And uh, James was um, my guide for today, a very, very good guide. So thanks to him, I tried the the most spicy salad I ever ate in my life, uh, like uh, it was yum with uh, eggs, and I enjoyed this. And uh, for the first time in my life, I tried uh, bubble tea. <laughs> also <laughs> enjoyed this. And uh, this is what I, I I will try to find uh, tomorrow on uh, Phuket to share with my friends. So this is this is something really really interesting. And uh, before we go deeper to all this Angular PWA stuff, let's play a bit because you know it's holiday for me uh, but uh, for you for most of you it was a regular working day and it's evening of working day so let's um, um, let's have some fun a bit uh, let me find this window and this is the game dedicated to our today's topic and uh, it's based on uh, Kahoot uh, service maybe uh, some of uh, you know this uh, in interesting free service to organize um, instant online games like this. So I ask you to go to address kahoot.it. Uh, kahoot.it and enter this code. Oh, champ, welcome, you are first. I'll give you 30 seconds to join. In the meanwhile, I'll explain the rules. Um, maybe let me try to make it full screen. Oh, yes. Yes, okay, folks. Uh, yeah, the, use your mobile device. It works fine uh, with app, without app. Just uh, open kahoot.it and enjoy the game using this code. The rules are very simple. We are trying to guess which is default um, PWA option for this or that framework. We'll have, uh, I don't know, oh, so many people. Um, yes, and uh, by the way, folks uh, who are watching uh, Facebook uh, live stream, hello, hello, everyone. I'm not sure that uh, you'll be able to play this because I know that you have some delay in the uh, stream, but uh, just try. Um, yes, so. The um, question will be, uh, I will show the name of the framework, Angular, React, uh, Vue, um, five or, or um, four frameworks, and four options. Um, like some, some libraries or nothing or something uh, custom. And I'm talking about 
default uh, PWA functionality, which is like recommended uh, by the core team or implemented by the core team, like like the official official things. And uh, the set of answers will be the same for every framework. So you just have to pick the proper color. You'll understand everything in uh, in one one second. Okay. Uh, okay. More and more players are are joining. Okay, 58, 59, maybe 60, and we start. <laughs> okay, we are good to go with 59. Uh, yeah, I, I, I could join myself, but uh, no reason. And maybe we have some, some sound. Oh, yeah, we have some New Year uh, sound here. Le 621, nice, maybe someone from Facebook joined us. 62, Ooh. Start. So, default PWA library for the framework. First question is about Vue.js. Custom or Workbox or SW Precache or nothing at all. And you have uh, some seconds and uh, the time of your reaction also counts. The, the sooner you answer, the, the higher the score. Okay, correct answer is workbox, and most of you answered correctly. Congratulations. We go further. And uh, who is our winner? Smiley! Smiley is our winner for this uh, round. Good. And uh, yes, uh, try try to answer as uh, as soon as possible. You will get more points. Next question. And uh, yeah, next next framework, but the set of um, answers is the same. Just for for the simplicity. Ionic PWA Toolkit default library. Twenty seconds. Okay, most of you told SW Precache, but in reality, this is Workbox again. Okay, nice try, nice try. Let's check the table. Tam, you are the best uh, for these uh, two rounds uh, all together. Ready to go further? And Angular, our today's hero. Custom, Workbox, SW Precache, or nothing. I'm, we are talking about default, about default. Of course, um, some options are available, but we are talking about default. Okay, not Workbox this time. Workbox also is uh, working good with Angular, but the default option is custom called Angular Service Worker. And yeah, it's a good result, second, uh, second place. Let's check the table. Oh, Smiley is first again, woo! And um, by the way, I have a couple of uh, prizes today, and let uh, the first prize be for the winner of this quiz if you if you uh, prefer not to stay anonymized it's ab absolutely up to you uh, okay we go further react and uh, this is a bit tricky question because they change it quite recently Workbox, yes, 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 you are right. I see, I see you know React better than Angular. Um, it was a tricky question because um, in Create React App version one, they used uh, SW Precache, but starting from version two, they uh, migrated to Workbox. And um, Create React App version one created PWA by default, like out of the box, now it's um, opt-in, so not all the developers are ready to have um, PWA uh, syngis. 
Uh, our next, okay, uh, we, are, we have new leader, uh, Saron Int. Congratulations. And uh, I think this will be our last question about Polymer PWA Starter Kit. Yeah, you answer so fast, you got the rules. Well, 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 from what I've seen, they didn't um, switch to workbox yet. I think they will do. So now they're driven by SW Precash, which is, we can say, the father of workbox. So um, we can say that workbox embraces the, the main principles of SW Precash. It's uh, also developed by, um, by Googlers. And uh, yeah, this is this is the logical development of SWP cache library. So let's let's check what's next. And next is uh, congratulations, Saronint. Uh, Are you here? Congratulations, man! And uh, you got a special prize. I don't know. I don't know what's inside. I'll be honest with you. Maybe it's just empty bag, which is also good. I'm a nerd. Yes. 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 Let's let's go on the stage. So you know, PWA things best of all. <laughs> good. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, thank you very much for gaming, and um, I I really recommend you to use uh, kahoot.it for your I don't know friend events, family events, everything. It's it's really good service, and it's uh, to it's totally free, so it's always uh, much much fun. Um, yes, so we have more and more results, and uh, now we can close this window. So it was uh, just funny game with some interesting results. So as we have just seen, all the frameworks except Angular, they uh, have workbox or like father or of workbox as a default uh, PWA functionality library. So what's so special with Angular and why do they have uh, their own tool to provide progressive ABAPS experience. Let's check. Uh, my session is, is about this. And um, to make it more, more, more useful for all the developers, not only Angular developers, I, I don't even ask uh, who is working with Angular or other frameworks. Uh, we are all just front-end developers. And uh, in our developer life, we we quite often switch from the framework to, to framework. So it's really interesting to know um, what is so, sh so special in Workbox as well, why, why it's so popular, right? And after all, this is uh, Angular Meetup, so let's uh, take Angular as uh, our Guinea Pig framework to have a look. What will work better, built-in functionality or Workbox? And of course, everything I present about workbox part of um, PWA is applicable to any framework. So if you work with uh, React, Vue, Ionic, your own custom framework, no framework at all, it will all work with workbox. So I hope this will be um, useful for you. Uh, so let's answer this question, how to create Angular progressive web app using the proper method, the, the method which will work better for us for this particular project. Of course, there is no like one size uh, fits all. Uh, we, we always have some options, and this is really good. Uh, just a couple of words about me. I came to you from uh, Oslo, Norway, where I live for the last uh, eight years. Originally, I'm uh, from Russia. I organize a similar meetup, Angular meetup, and um, some more meetups in, um, in Oslo. So we are um, soulmates with um, James. Uh, and also, I run a conference about Angular called NG 
Vikings. Um, this n next year, this will be third edition of NG Vikings, and like real Vikings, we travel from country to country. Um, next year, we go to Denmark, and um, this is conference um, from community for community. So this is non-profit event. We organize um, as volunteers, all the or organizational team, and um, yeah, we. Th th this is why. We have very very special spirit, so this is not 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 a commercial event. We um, try to keep um, ticket price as low as possible, just uh, you know to, to compensate our di direct um, spendings. We fully rely on sponsors, of course, uh, and uh, we always have um, the like largest possible discounts for developer communities, of course. Uh, I will um, send a discount code for your Angular Meetup as well. Plus, we uh, have a scholarship program. If um, you consider yourself as um, the person who has to go there but uh, don't have the, the possibility to buy the ticket, you are welcome to apply. We share as, as many free tickets as possible. Uh, this is this is my Twitter. This is, could be useful for you because one day ago, and yeah, I, I post mostly about um, frameworks, uh, web platform, progressive web apps, um, Angular, so only technical stuff. And and yesterday, I, um, I I posted about my gift, my holiday gift for all developer community. I uh, run two workshops which are like quite uh, popular, dedicated to progressive web apps, my main focus of um, interest. And I opened a uh, course where uh, like many, many pages, documents with full flow, with uh, full source, full everything for developer community. So if you wish to start with um, Angular Progressive Web Apps or Progressive Web Apps in general, you are welcome to use this, um, these documents, these uh, repos, um, everything. So it's like step-by-step -step full day workshop instructions. Just uh, follow me, uh, this uh, tw pin tweet and um, use this. So learn it and run it for your uh, colleagues, for your communities. Before we dive into Angular stuff, let's uh, give an answer. What is PWA or Progressive Web App at all, what are we reasoning about here today? Uh, let me introduce the definition given by folks from uh, Mozilla Developer Network, and uh, I'm proud to contribute to finding this definition, uh, like simplified and uh, like the, the most uh, modern one. So this is uh, still web applications, applications written in, in JavaScript using HTML as, uh, templates, um, CSS for styling, so regular web apps, which are using latest and greatest features of uh, modern browsers by applying progressive enhancement strategy. Uh, why do we need it at all to provide the best possible user experience? So we all know that um, like web platform is a bit different in terms of uh, features available compared to native, uh, for example, mobile apps, right? So not everything uh, is available there yet, but PWA is uh, trying to reduce this gap between what web can do and what uh, native code can do. And um, so it's, it's good for our users, clients, customers, you name this. And of course, it's good for us, for developers and for stakeholders, because we want and we dream about progressive web apps work everywhere. Um, not, not just everywhere, but everywhere like, like native, like first class citizen of this or that platform. This is a very strong statement, right? These apps work everywhere. Let's have a look at uh, the reality for, for the moment, for the end of... Uh, year of 2018, and we'll have a look at um, three places where we can uh, run web apps. Um, first of all, browser, right? It's a uh, web after all, and um, it's not so bad there. Uh, all the major browsers support at least basic uh, features of um, what we need from, uh, from this idea in general, but it's not very interesting uh, 
place to to reason about um, um, web apps, right? So browser is uh, the place where we start and run and use uh, our web apps uh, in in general. So no nothing very exciting here, right? Um, it's more interesting on the platform level and here on um, mobile um, line of this table i'm talking not about just the possibility to run our uh, javascript applications uh, in android or ios it's also of course available in the browsers right but i'm here about running web apps as native applications as um, uh, first class citizens of the platform and for android it's uh, it's really good sub support. You really um, cannot differentiate uh, is this native application or progressive web application uh, from the from from the first look. So it it's hard to understand is this like native code written in Java or Kotlin or this is uh, just a JavaScript app. So it behaves the same. It plays the same rule of the platform. Sometimes it's uh, way faster, and uh, in 99% of the cases, it is way lighter. So of course, you then don't have to download hundreds of megabytes of um, native code. A bit more challenging uh, for um, iOS and um, support of service worker API, which is a crucial API for PWA um, IDEA, started um, this year in uh, March. Uh, but um, it's it's uh, not fully supported, and uh, there are some um, quite annoying bugs. Still, you can install your web application as a native application on your iPhone or iPad. And um, by saying this, I don't mean that this will be just a shortcut, like uh, like was always possible. This is this will be not just a shortcut on your uh, home screen. This will be your application living inside this this phone, uh, which will work in uh, offline. Uh, on the desktops, we have uh, Chrome operating systems, like uh, for example, this uh, Pixel Book driven by uh, Chrome OS. It's it's really hard to imagine the best um, operating system to run web application as native applications because uh, basically uh, whole um, operating system is uh, Chrome Chrome browser on on these uh, Chromebooks. Now, now you 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 also can install Linux. Um, on Windows, you can install, like really install your web application from Chrome browser. Same on Linux. And uh, uh, starting from Chrome 72, I think in the very beginning of the next year, we'll get the same for Mac. Now we can uh, try how that works um, by uh, turning on flag. So we as developers can try it now. And, and that works fine. So just imagine inside your uh, main menu of the browser, of Chrome browser, you have one more item called install and name your name of your application and hmm, then the application will become um, the, the full scale uh, application for, uh, for your operating system. So this level of support um, it gave me idea to call this year, which um, like we have uh, some um, last days of this year, like year of PWA. So I'm I'm looking for ideas um, how to call the the next year. So if if you have some something in mind, just just share. So I don't know, year of um, super year of PWA. We'll see. We'll see. Let's let's wait for some some news. Uh, back to our user experience. What will this bring to users and uh, yeah, to to all of us? We we all uh, users of some um, mobile devices, of course, right? So first, it's uh, really about uh, unbinding your app experience from uh, being online. So using uh, keeping progressive apps idea in mind, we can. Uh, uh, forget about the the web uh, platform, like about something that we use only when we are connected to the internet. Uh, something about surfing the web. No, let's think about the web platform now as about application 
platform. So we have uh, this platform right not to create apps which are fully independent on, on um, connection. Um, if we take um, our mobile device and uh, we start any native application like like Facebook, like Twitter, we click on this uh, menu item and we don't care are we connected or not. We know that UI will show up. And um, in most cases, even we, if we disconnect it from the internet, we will see some content like like uh, the feed from um, Facebook or from Twitter from the time when we were connected, right? So okay, this is not the latest information, but still it's uh, something and uh, we can read the message uh, sent to us, uh, disregard of uh, our connection status. It was not available on the web for uh, like for, for historical reasons, right? So we could not rely on HTTP cache. It's something totally, totally unpredictable for us as um, for developers. Now we can, we have full control on what we cache, how we cache, uh, how we manage this, ca this cache. If we have the privilege to stay connected, and this is really privilege, don't think about uh, connection, about being online, like about uh, default state of your application. Um, if we are online, we can um, um, say um, reach out to our users by sending push notifications. And it's something that also was not available on the web uh, at all. Um, we, we all used to receive these push notifications on uh, native apps again, right? And uh, we don't care if this app running in foreground, if we started this at all. We know that once we su subscribe to these push notifications from Facebook, they will come to us. They will bother us, they will annoy us, they will entertain us, but they will come. Now we have the same for the web. We don't care about the status of our application. It can uh, run in the browser, the browser can be closed, notification will come. It's a b of course, it requires uh, platform level support. It's not only about browser support. Lots of other really interesting things um, exposed by Service Worker API, which is actually a whole new programmable level or layer between our application and all external um, world. And um, after all, it's really important uh, for from from the, from the user perspective to have the um, um, our web service web product website wrapped and uh, formed as an application so all the um, like research uh, show that um, people love to have uh, something like um, icon on their home screen so instead of going to the um, to the url of the browser which is also absolutely valid way to start your pwa they still prefer to have something installed and of course to give the to the set of our JavaScript files, HTML files, CSS files, maybe pictures, um, the, the shape of application, we have to provide at least the name of the application and set of icons, right? So now we have a um, web app manifest responsible for this, which is a simple JSON file um, following web app manifest specification where we provide all this meta info. Um, let's go back to our today's hero, Angular. And um, as any modern framework, so you've seen that all the major frameworks, they have something official related to progressive web apps. Angular loves PWA, Angular em embraces um, PWA. And um, there are some options available for us. How do we create this offline ready push notifications, power it, uh, cool applications? First, we can do everything manually. And um, while we are talking about uh, PWA, in most cases we mean something related to service worker API. This is like a uh, working horse of um, all the um, PWA concept. This is like brain or heart of um, all your um, uh, PWA. So it's absolutely possible to create it by hand. Next option is something from Angular core team, called Angular Service Worker. In that case, we do not write Service Worker ourselves. 
So we fully rely on what Angular team gives to us. In the um, service worker, this is uh, JavaScript code. A JavaScript code following some, um, uh, some, some rules, let's say. Or we can rely on some available PWA libraries. And uh, we have um, at least two options, SW precache. Maybe it's a bit um, uh, like old school, and uh, I would not recommend to use this. It's, it's still a valid option, but it's not under um, active uh, maintenance now. I, I believe they still uh, fix um, bugs, but I'm not sure about uh, new features. Because team uh, who created this switched to development of work box. So SW Precache was, was more or less an um, experiment which uh, gained uh, huge popularity among uh, developers. Um, but now we have um, Workbox. Let's check what will this take from us to create a minimal, minimal, minimal version of Progressive Web App. So something that um, we can at least call that this is Progressive Web Application. And um, to list what we have to do to call our app a Progressive App. Um, you can find some checklists on the web, and uh, I compiled um, the most important points from these checklists for you. So first, we have to provide this web app manifest, but it's not a really big deal. This is um, a JSON file with uh, name of the app and set of um, icons. Next, our app has to have application shell. This is... Uh, way of syncing or design pattern or architecture of uh, our application where we, when we are sure that at least UI part of our application will start in uh, offline mode. Um, we'll go back to this um, a bit uh, later in, in uh, details, but application shell, this is, don't think about this like um, about like special uh, framework or library. This is this is just the architecture. So you can uh, create application shell uh, using any, any framework or without any framework at, at all. This is just the way you build your app. And uh, two more points. They are not directly related to um, PWA APIs. Let's say that I think our days, these are default options we built our app, right? So I think most of our new projects are respons uh, responsive and uh, mobile first. And uh, of course, serving VR HTTPS also crucial nowadays. And I think this is de facto standard. I don't think that uh, you start any, any web project without thinking about HTTPS. Because uh, yes, this, th th this is a good manner for, for the web. Let's have a closer look on uh, application shell. So how do we exactly implement this if we want to build it uh, manually? So let's just build this. Let's um, build something, something like this. Uh, it's uh, just a web, web uh, application. Um, Let's pretend that we open this on um, on mobile device, but it's 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 not um, like crucial. So what what's good to have in application shell? Something meaningful, something more useful for the user than just a spinner, than just a message about we are loading something. Let's say that this will be header, some uh, navigation icons in footer, and instead of uh, real content, we can uh, put uh, some placeholders. It's also um, quite popular our days to, um, um, to have this kind of placeholders. Then uh, after content is loaded, um, there will be less um, jumping on, on the page. Um, so what do we need to show this UI to our user? First, we have to understand which um, exactly files do we need for having this. Obviously, something like index.html, our main JavaScript bundle, our main um, styles bundle. So we have to find exact list of these, um, um, let's call this files or assets or resources. And it really makes sense to make it as uh, small as possible. So only critical um, things. Uh, next, it's a good idea to calculate hash sums of these 
files. While, why do we need this? A bit, a bit later about this. Um, then, then it's time for our service worker to take uh, control. On the very first load of uh, this application, so just imagine our user typed um, mysuperwebsite.th. Our service worker should take this list of files we specified somehow and put them into cache. But um, don't uh, mess uh, cache storage with um, old uh, gold HTTP cache. These are totally different um, things. HTTP cache, something that we front-end developers don't have much control uh, over, right? So it's provided by some headers from uh, server side. Cache storage, we have full control from our Java script, both from service worker and from, from our application. So we can put files there, we can remove files from there, like full control. How do we provide offline experience for um, this uh, PWA? On every next load, we serve these files, not from network anymore, so we don't go to our server. We take these files from, from this uh, very specific cache. But, of course, we don't want uh, to serve the very initial version of the application forever, right? Because it's, um, in most cases, this is living web um, product. We generate new versions, we fix bugs, we introduce new bugs, so we want to have this update cycle somehow, right? This is why, um, while we serve, it's a good idea to check somehow if uh, on the network, on our server, a new a newer version is available. Okay, this is a uh, good idea. Why to serve the new version on the next load? Um, this is why it's uh, n plus one. Uh, why no it's n plus one, not just n? Because you remember that uh, we serve files from cache immediately without even going to network. We, we can go to check if the new version available in the background, like later, but uh, our goal is to give something to the user immediate. So, and so this works um, like win-win. It works um, offline because we don't even go to the network. And um, if we online, it works immediately, right? So you just type your URL and bam, it's, uh, it's the UI is, is there without uh, going to network at all. But this is a kind of drawback of this um, uh, architecture, of this application shell architecture. Uh, we can serve the updated version only on next reload. Uh, what we can do is, if we know that something was updated, we can at least show the message, right? So you remember that we go to check if a new version is available after we show the UI, but we can show this message. And uh, let's split this into steps. Step number one is um, exclusively for build time, right? So we know this list of uh, assets we need, we can calculate their sums while we build. Good, so it's not related to running the app. Next, number two, like the main part of everything, it's our service worker, which is uh, taking responsibility over all these points. Uh, serving, caching, checking, uh, reloading, showing message. Just imagine uh, how much code do we have to write manually if we go for manual mode. And the number three, this is actually not the requirement for uh, PWA minimum viable product, but it's a best practice, so I do not recommend uh, to implement application shell without this, uh, um, let's call this uh, user experience feature. Yes, we can survive without this. Uh, we can explain somehow to our users that, um, okay, um, you will get the new version on the next um, load, but um, it, it, it's really recommended. Um, okay, service worker, intro uh, really really fast to to jump to our today's um, heroes so after all this is a javascript file right so Java service worker is um, javascript code uh, a bit 
uh, specific because um, main part of uh, service worker functionality wrapped into some event handlers. So service worker is event-driven worker. It wakes up and works only on some event received, like um, event, for, for example, install service worker, activate service worker. Uh, another very important event, fetch. Service worker receives this event when our application, our main app, is uh, requesting for some uh, resource on the network. For example, I, I don't know, um, our app says um, <laughs> has um, logo PNG in HTML markup, and uh, the browser, instead of going directly to the network, to our server for this logo PNG, it passes everything via service worker. And uh, in service worker, we are free to implement any logic. So instead of uh, our logo type, we can uh, give away a um, picture with um, kittens easily, or we can uh, give uh, errors. Again, easily, it's up to us. Um, logically, if we uh, imagine that uh, this is our website, and uh, this is browser or operating system, service worker works as a gatekeeper. So it like uh, intercepts 100% of HTTP calls to the, to the network. It could be our API, or it could be third party content delivery service, everything, everything uh, that, that is outside of, um, of the browser. Plus, uh, it also receives event events from an from the network itself, and um, it's about push notifications. So all the push notifications go to uh, service worker, not to our application. Uh, so we can think if a um, uh, browser is the house and the website is, um, say, um, uh, citizen of, 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 of this house, then service worker is a kind of uh, a janitor or, or gatekeeper, which is uh, responsible to uh, let or not let some uh, requests, and uh, it also can, I don't know, fake fake everything. This is why it's a requirement to serve everything via HTTPS. Uh, technically, it's uh, similar to another type of worker we have in our browsers to shared worker. So it uh, has some um, similarities. I think the most uh, important one is we don't have uh, access to document object model because we run in total totally different um, thread but of course um, we would not have uh, another type of worker if uh, it was uh, fully similar this is why we have uh, uh, serious differences as well um, here let's say it has very specific lifecycle model, so uh, and uh, it's um, it's 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 really um, multi steps and uh, very conservative model. Let's uh, let's have a look um, how this uh, look um, looks. We don't have um, uh, like enough time to go through all these um, steps. Uh, let me highlight the moment when we receive event in service worker. This is important. So install and activate our events we have in our service worker. Uh, we, we, we can uh, use uh, our event listeners to put some code inside. And uh, on install, we normally do caching. On activate, we normally clean previous versions of, um, of our cache. What's also important in that flow that uh, if something goes wrong on uh, install or activate event, our source service worker just not uh, registered. So, so browser says, okay, we can live um, without this. And um, it's important to think here about uh, progressive enhancement part of, uh, of the idea. Uh, so if something goes wrong, if, for example, browser doesn't support uh, service worker in general, or this feature of service worker, it's okay. Our application should survive. We should not uh, get um, like full uh, red um, console uh, uh, full of uh, lines of errors. So this is why we constantly do feature detection why we, while we work with um, service workers. Um, 
Just a couple of um, samples. How does it look inside Service Worker JavaScript code? You remember, we have uh, install event, we have um, activate event, and this is like normal uh, structure of any service worker. So all the code is wrapped into, into these listeners. If we go for manual mode, we will write something like this. And um, yeah, that um, it might look not not very complex, right? So put some files into cache, delete some files from cache, but in the real life, we have to deal with um, lots of edge cases. Um, basically, writing your own service worker is really interesting task. Uh, it's very time consuming task, and uh, you will learn a lot about service worker API and about HTTP protocol, because it's mostly related to network. Um, things uh, like to connection to networking but you have to uh, pay attention to so many details and so many edge cases so uh, after all i i uh, i believe we all able to write some uh, basic service um, workers for this or that use case but it's really hard to think about all possible use cases about all possible fallbacks drawbacks best practices so this is an uh, interesting task, but maybe you have your, your own task to, to um, implement. Next, uh, another uh, event I mentioned uh, called Fetch, where we uh, decide what to do um, if we... Uh, here we can check what exactly was request, uh, and this is very, very naive implementation, right? So we uh, check if the API was... An part of URL, we go for one strategy, if not, we go for another strategy, and of course I don't even um, uh, list the code of these uh, strategies. It's like, again, um, full of uh, networking, full of uh, possible fallbacks, full of uh, um, handling of edge cases. Uh, this is uh, why I can only list what you will end up at least, at least these points in the real world. Uh, after all, you will end up with implementing your own uh, implementation of uh, router. Uh, you will uh, create your own uh, cache validation uh, algorithm. Uh, many other interesting things, really interesting, uh, challenging. But again, maybe this is not uh, part of your um, task you got on, on your job if uh, when you was told create a progressive web app. So I can list uh, pros, and cons, pros and cons of this uh, approach. We have full flexibility if we write our own service worker. We can do whatever we want, whatever we need really. On the other hand, let's call this very general great responsibility. So it's time consuming. Uh, believe me, you will uh, end up with um, lots of uh, errors on the first runs of your application because you forgot to do this, you forgot to do this. And maybe you will not uh, progressively enhance your web project. You can, you, you can even kill your project. You can uh, send it uh, to offline. And uh, it's quite challenging to deal with broken service worker. Uh, we'll um, have a look why a bit later. So it's a really good idea to rely on some tools. Tools help us uh, with um, working on our own task. This is, this is general for all the libraries, all the helpers, all the even frameworks, right? Two points which are super relevant for PWA. First, uh, Service Worker API is a living standard, and sometimes there are changes. And uh, some of these change my changes might be a breaking change. So if you used some, I don't know, undocumented uh, or um, deprecated uh, features of Service Worker API or Fetch API, on the with the next version of the this or that browser, you may end up with something broken, and that happened. Believe me. Uh, also, there are lots of um, things like uh, redirects, uh, like uh, course requests, uh, which are part of normal um, HTTP uh, like uh, networking, but uh, you can just easily uh, forget about um, this or that detail, uh, which could be absolutely real life scenario for your web project. Um, okay, now it's time to uh, finally uh, compare 
two approaches of tools helping us with service worker. I hope I convinced you that service worker is not the simplest uh, concept uh, on the earth. Let's uh, have a look at our helpers. And uh, I will build it this way. We'll check uh, how this or that feature implemented using Angular service worker or Workbox. And the code on the blue will be dedicated, uh, slides on the blue background will be dedicated to Angular service worker. This is shortening for this, NGSW, Angular service worker. Slides on uh, light dark, uh, light brown um, background will be dedicated to Workbox. Okay? Time for me to check you. What is this? Angular service worker. Yes. Yes, you're right. Um, it's all about automation. So Angular team did everything for us for real jump start. So just imagine we have um, uh, our regular Angular application. It could be a freshly created application or uh, created, uh, I don't know, sometime uh, before, uh, like our pro project we work on for last, I don't know, months or year. Um, we scaffold using schematics. We built using Angular CLI, and uh, we during grind time we have Angular Service Worker written for us. Let's uh, have a closer look on uh, how do we start with uh, adding progressive features to our Angular application using Angular Service Worker. And that's easy. So we have really one liner: ng add Angular PWA. It's uh, thanks to schematics, this um, nice uh, feature of uh, Angular and Angular CLI. What is schematics? It's just automation of boring uh, file uh, tasks for us. So uh, when we run this, we create some files, we inject uh, some code to other files. So all these uh, steps, uh, let, me, let me list them, those. Uh, we can even don't care about uh, what exactly happened for, for at least for 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 the beginning. Uh, this is uh, just something for us to jump start to to automate everything. So we ran this command, and I think on 99% of um, your projects this will uh, run um, smoothly. Maybe if you have some really really custom setup, I don't know. You don't have. Uh, Index HTML, let's uh, start uh, HTML, something else. Maybe schematics will say, I can do this. Uh, I don't know where to inject the code. Then, then you, you always can uh, check what exactly uh, this uh, schematic does. So this is not magic at all. This is boring file operations. Next, we can build. Uh, and it's important to run um, production build of uh, our Angular app. After this, we'll see some files appeared in um, our distribution folder. So what um, exactly happened? Um, Angular CLI, now it has a special switch called service worker equals true in uh, Angular JSON. Now it knows what to do. It builds for uh, us configuration file called NGSW JSON and just copies service worker itself. So NGSW worker JS, it's a uh, the service worker file itself, which we could write manually, but Angular team did it for us. So it's just copied from uh, node modules. No, no, nothing complex than this. So we can say that, you remember, uh, this one, two, three points we had uh, in application shell um, architecture. On build time, we are covered by Angular CLI. It does all this dirty job for us. Uh, we um, now have a list of uh, resources with their hash sums, okay. And um, step number two, the, the, the largest one, it's Angular Service Worker. So again, we are co fully covered. If we have a look on this NGSW JSON, it looks like this, exactly like what we want. List of files and their hash sums. Now we know that hash sums are here to um, provide versioning. So Angular Service Worker will understand if uh, our index.html was updated or not. Is it time to download the newer version from network or, uh, or we are fine? Um, uh, just very briefly uh, configuration file based on what 
Angular CLI generates this NGSW JSON based on NGSW config JSON. So you can think about NGSW JSON, it's something for robots, for Angular service worker. NGSW config JSON, which is in our source folder for us, for developers, to fine tune these settings if, if needed. This is how it looks by default. So it says Angular CLI takes five icon, icon, um, icon index HTML, everything CSS, everything JS, and uh, consider this set of files as application shell. So this is default mode, and it's good for like 99% of, um, of the setups. Okay, it's time to check how will this work. We run ng-surf, no. We run ng-surf production, no. Unfortunately, ng-surf command, this uh, test, uh, this development uh, web server Angular CLI has included, doesn't work with um, any kind of uh, service worker because it's too smart. It does too many optimizations for us, for developers, to provide this um, like real-time updates and, uh, and so on. So it like it's just different models with service worker. They like conflict with um, each other. What we can do, we can use for, for development. We can use any other static uh, developer web server. So I listed three of them called Surf, Super Static, Light Server, like y y you name it. Uh, then if we start our app in the browser, we'll see that files pre-cached, and if we check offline mode and uh, hit uh, reload, application is still available. So we just got offline mode of our app with one line of uh, code in, in terminal, so uh, we are now safe from uh, offline dinosaur. It's, it's good. Okay, let's have a look at different option. Now time for me to check you. What's this background about? Workbox, yes, 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 you are still listening, you are still with me, this is good. What is Workbox? This is a uh, network automation uh, PWA library. It includes really great set of features going uh, like out of the box, but what I love most of uh, Workbox is that you have full control on uh, service worker. You remember that in case of Angular, we don't touch service worker at all. We just copy this from um, node modules. Not, not we, but Angular CLI. So it's like the same service worker every, every time. Um, the, like, it only depends on the version of Angular, maybe. Maybe, maybe with uh, a new version of Angular, they will introduce a new version of service worker. But in general, this is something that uh, Static and only NGSW JSON, its configuration is something that we have some level of control over. Here we um, generate our own one, uh, which means that we have full control on this. And there are different working modes. Uh, it has its own CLI. It's quite popular nowadays that every uh, small and big utility has a global CLI. It has a Webpack plugin. Uh, which is a um, valid option um, for many projects, but maybe not for Angular, because um, we, uh, we don't want to uh, eject CLI just because of uh, PWA to expose our Webpack configuration, or node module. And this is something that we will use. Let's have a look how do we build application shell using node module. We just need to install one uh, package called Workbox Build, and this will help us on um, build step. Uh, we have to do something manually. After all, we have to write some code. Not, uh, not a large one, but, uh, but still. Let's uh, create, um, it's a relatively simple JavaScript code, but it's not for browser, it's for Node.js. Uh, you remember, we are still on build time. We use inject manifest uh, method from uh, freshly installed workbox build uh, module. We provide some configuration a bit later about this, and we call this method inject manifest, right? So let's uh, have a look. Um, what do we exactly inject? What, um, what do we provide this configuration for? And we inject something like this. You see, it's... Um, 
Absolutely same idea is in uh, Angular service worker, just different format, right? It's again, list of uh, assets we need for application shell and their hash sums. How do we say exactly uh, to Workbox build which files to take? It's configuration. So, so this is exactly this Workbox config we had in script. Idea is the same. We provide some um, pattern or we can list the files explicitly. Um, but what's, uh, the, yeah, th this is um, a pattern. Uh, again, we can use um, globe. But here we have uh, one more important option, source service worker. So we will inject this manifest generated by S uh, NGSW2 uh, source service worker, which in is in simplest form will look like this. So uh, this is service worker JS. This is service worker itself, but you see instead of this event handlers, uh, instead of these listeners, we import uh, workbox library from, from CDN in this case, but we can uh, host it locally, of course. And we use pre-cache and route method instead of uh, all manual manipulations with caching, with uh, serving. We inject this list of uh, assets and their hash sums exactly here. So workbox build does, again, file operation. It takes service worker JS as a source. It generates this manifest based on configuration. And it puts um, this list instead of empty array here. So back to our one, two, three. Um, build step is here and uh, all the network magic, all, all the caching magic of service worker is here. So we only have to add one more step to our build command. So after ng build production, we run our JavaScript um, file for the node and we have everything good. Now we can list uh, pros and cons of, um, this, um, of these two approaches, ngsw. Really super simple to start. Um, integrated with uh, Angular absolutely seamlessly, and the uh, defaults are good enough to to not even touch configuration file. On the other hand, in Workbox, we still have a quite convenient uh, way to build service worker and full control on uh, our service worker itself. We'll need it a bit later. Uh, you remember that we still have point number three non-covered at all, the better UX flow. Um, let's have a look what's the problem again. We deployed version number one. Our user opens the website and sees version number one. We deployed version number two. Say like, I don't know, we updated the logo type. On the reload, our user will still see version number two. You remember that service worker takes uh, control over all the um, outgoing requests, and instead of going to network, it takes everything from cache. At the same time, if uh, we implemented this manually in our service worker created by hands, or if we use Angular service worker, or if we use uh, Workbox with some extra setup, we can we can go and uh, check if version was um, updated. But uh, let's uh, wait a bit. In the regular case, in any case, uh, on the next uh, refresh, we'll still see um, we, we will see version two after all. But what we can do here again, uh, because we know after showing. UI, we know that it, it, it's already old. What can we do? We can show some kind of message to our user. Application was updated. How we implement this, uh, this pop-up message in Angular Service Worker? Using Angular native um, tools and uh, approaches. In the package of Service Worker, we have a special um, um, service called SW Update. And uh, this code is like 100% uh, Angular style looking code. We import this, we inject this using dependency injection in constructor, and then we subscribe to this variable. Who can tell me what type of this uh, variable, what, uh, where, where, what we subscribe to? W what is the type of the variable called available? Observable. Yes, you're absolutely right. So this is very angular 
like approach. So we have observable, we listen to this. If this observable emits event, we just show this message. In, in my sample, this is um, this um, very default uh, JavaScript uh, confirmation that new version is available. And uh, exactly this way, we provide uh, better user experience, um, better user experience. And also in Angular Service Worker, we can uh, go a bit a step further and not just uh, provide generic message, but tell what exactly was updated. In the configuration file, we have app data. It's absolutely optional, but if you wish, you can do this. And then, uh, instead of this uh, generic message you send, you show every time, you can uh, you can show um, your your custom your very very custom um, message about what was updated exactly. Interesting. Workbox. We have two options. First one is uh, like the the simplest one. You remember we still write our own service worker. We still use a pre-caching module from Workbox. It's, um, it can be extended by plugins, by plugins from Workbox itself, by our own plugins. In uh, this case, this is a um, plugin which is a part of a Workbox package called uh, Broadcast Update. So we say that please enable this plugin and uh, send broadcast messages uh, to channel called AppShell. And then in our app, we can listen to this channel. And if some message uh, arrived, we, we show this message. So again, everything, uh, um, everything was possible to automate, automated for us. This way we provide this message. Another option uh, is to use service worker life cycle. Let's have a look at um, service worker registration code. So we, we didn't... Um, um, explore this moment yet. So we talk about our application, we talk about service worker uh, file, but we didn't uh, say how do we connect this to. And it's done by registration of service worker against our origin. In the very naive form, this, this code uh, is looking like this. And the first line is uh, feature detection. This is must have because not all the browsers, uh, not all the versions of the browsers uh, have service worker. Okay. Uh, but it's not good enough. Let's uh, have some uh, requirements uh, to to this process. So first, feature detection. We had this even in a naive version of this code. Then it's a really good idea to register service worker as late as possible. Why? Not to compete for resources with our main thread. You remember that service uh, worker stuff and PWA functions in general it's something that progressively enhances our app, and in worst cases, we can uh, forget about this enhancement. Main thing for us is our main application is running and loading as fast as possible. Uh, and then we can hook into some of lifecycle events. If we can check uh, in the code, was the service worker file updated? And in most cases, it means that application was updated itself. So you remember that in case of Workbox, we inject this uh, list of uh, assets and their hash sums directly into this service worker JS. So if, uh, I don't know, our index.html was updated, then service worker JS physically also was updated and we can use this um, moment. But uh, again, to automate this a bit, do not uh, go deep into the, this uh, life cycle, at least for, for the beginning. I can recommend you another library called uh, Register Service Worker. This is, this is really, really tiny library, uh, which exposes uh, really uh, convenient uh, methods for um, us. Um, and here uh, also, please notice that uh, I show the best moment in Angular to register custom service worker. If, if uh, you don't go for NGSW, use um, Bootstrap um, module uh, resolve in uh, main TS. It guarantees that you register service worker after UI render it itself. So the latest moment uh, possible. So you use register method from, from this um, tiny library exposing us um, updated as a callback and exactly here we can show this prompt something was updated if you wish to reload this uh, and uh, this is uh, option number two uh, in um, workbox uh, better ux flow 
and maybe by looking at this uh, GitHub uh, handle, you can uh, tell me the, the name or the author of this library. And uh, he is also author and main, uh, like maintainer of uh, one very popular framework, front-end framework. Yes, it's a library by Evan Yu. And um, exactly this approach used in uh, PWA plugin uh, for Vue.js and very similar approach, definitely inspired by this code used in uh, Create React App. So this is quite uh, well battle tested code. Okay, let's list uh, what we have uh, for uh, this point. Angular style for uh, providing this experience in Angular plus possibility to show message uh, what was exactly updated. In uh, Workbox, we have uh, two interesting options to implement the same. Good. Now time has come to extend our MVP a bit and uh, let's talk about runtime caching. Go to Angular Service Worker again, we provide strategies. We will not uh, dive very deep into documentation of how we exactly provide this. It's uh, quite well documented at uh, angular.io. Just uh, very briefly, we provide some kind of uh, pattern for our URLs again. And um, uh, what's um, important in configuration is uh, strategy itself. Um, we have two strategies, only two strategies in Angular Service Worker. Uh, freshness, when we try to reach out to network, or performance, when we don't even go to network, when we try to grab the resource from cache first. Uh, in uh, other libraries, this strategy is called uh, a network first and cache first uh, correspondingly. Uh, another interesting feature of uh, Angular Service Worker is uh, provide versioning. So for example, just imagine uh, your API backend changed the format um, of um, output data. I don't know, you wrap now everything to result uh, field of JSON instead of results. And uh, you can uh, start worrying, what if Angular Service Worker cached these responses uh, for the older version and I have newer version of uh, front end in the browser, yeah, most likely you will uh, get some uh, errors and most likely you will not see uh, proper, uh, proper data in the app itself. We are covered here. Um, it's optional field called version. If you change it, like uh, increment this, then Angular Service Worker will ignore everything what was cached before. It is, this is nice um, mechanism. Um, it's way more flexible and extendable in uh, Workbox um, JS. A again, you remember we uh, still work inside our own service worker JS, and um, instead of uh, providing JSON-like configuration, we basically provide the JavaScript-like uh, configuration. So it's still it's hard to name this. Um, code, right? This is, uh, despite this is not JSON, but JavaScript, it's still looking like uh, uh, configuration, but um, now we can extend this if we need to run some custom code, if we are not good uh, with um, all the settings Workbox exposes for us, and it's quite flexible and extendable set of settings for to control our cache. We can even uh, plug in some code. So this is um, like, it's the most, uh, flexible option um, ever. So, a summary for this point. Angular Service Worker, we don't write any code at all. Uh, we have a good possibility to reset cache for the new version. For the workbox, first we have, uh, instead of two strategies, we have, I don't know, six or seven, I don't remember. So you, you can um, choose uh, whatever works better for this uh, API, for this subset of API, for this uh, CDN, you are, you are very flexible. If you are not good enough even with this, you are welcome to write your own code and inject this as a plugin. Our next chapter, push notifications. Um, Angular Service Worker gives us, again, Angular style approach to register for um, for these notifications. Again, import, uh, dependency injection, 
in constructor and um, request uh, subscription method exposed very very handy and uh, uh, convenient for us and um, to to to, um, to explain push notifications I, I can only uh, say like very briefly that it's separated into two independent uh, like chapter uh, parts it's about subscription and this is uh, about this and then it's distributed uh, in the code and in the time sending push notification itself and sending it all starts from your backend it's uh, it's not um, uh, related to front end at all actually because it started at backend and ends up in in service worker um, here in the sending notification we have to just follow one simple convention uh, we have to wrap the payload of notification we want to send to our user to field called notification what's next next angular service worker will uh, listen to push event and if you formed notification like this it will understand everything so you don't have to write any line of code any uh, line of configuration angular service worker is absolutely ready and uh, for some reason this is absolutely non documented on uh, angular.io absolutely no, no no single word about uh, push notifications uh, what's about workbox workbox knows about push notifications nothing it's um, it's workbox fully dedicated to network opt optimizations network um, automation so we have to write um, push handler for uh, in our service worker ourselves luckily as you remember we have full control on this and um, this is uh, this is a very naive and super simplified code but still it shows you the um, the flavor of of this we listen to event called push and we use show notification method of uh, notification API but here compared to angular service worker yes we have to write this code but we have um, uh, full control on what's next and next uh, user can click on notification and uh, we can um, expose some um, actions inside this notification so we have full control we have fu full control on what's uh, happening when user closes notification why because because we write uh, this service worker ourselves so we don't have this privilege in uh, angular service worker uh, good let's uh, summarize uh, NGSW super simple to subscribe and uh, nothing to do to receive notifications we are fully covered by angular team uh, workbox ah, yes uh, one more important po point uh, I think it's already released we still can uh, handle clicks but with one very very serious uh, limitation we handle these clicks only inside our application not inside our source worker you remember that power of push notifications is about yeah, we can show them we can uh, process what's going on even when application is not running at all here uh, we have this uh, only inside the app itself not inside the source worker workbox no single line of code about push notifications we have to write everything ourselves but uh, we got the full full power and flexibility of everything let's summarize njsw really easy to start you remember one line it's uh, integrated with angular as uh, as good as possible because you know it's after all from angular team so and the angular service worker knows everything about the app uh, thanks to angular cli to have some basic features we don't have to write any single line of code if we have to write uh, a code you remember this sw push sw update it's all angular style so i can call this approach like add uh, add schematic and configure and after all you only get what's already included there it's um, it's not possible to extend the, the functionality unfortunately on the other hand workbox first it's framework agnostic so view folks react folks uh, polymer folks 
you can use everything I listed on this um, light uh, brown slides. It's it works absolutely the same for any kind of um, framework. J just um, I don't know, uh, find the proper moment uh, in your framework to register service worker. It has a really great functionality going out of the box. If you need to configure this, uh, you again uh, given set of um, options which can cover i don't know 99% of your use cases if uh, if not you can write your own plugin and run your own code to extend this configuration even even further and after all we uh, have full power of service worker api of notifications api push api uh, whatever because we can uh, write our own code so i can call this setup configure code a bit and get really, really what you want from your PWA. Uh, my last uh, advice, this is uh, Slack team I organized uh, some years ago, and uh, now it's the lar largest uh, place on the planet to discuss PWA, um, I don't know, ideas, uh, to share your experience, to um, ask people what's uh, useful. It has folks from um, all the browsers, uh, from libraries, workbox, from um, uh, frameworks. Uh, so join this, it's uh, open. And on that, thank you very much. <laughs> and now I'm absolutely open for your questions. Don't be shy. And I, uh, b b before you think about your next question, let me let me tell you something. I run a similar meetup in uh, in Oslo, and I know how it's challenging to uh, to invite speakers. So please, people, this is a place uh, for you. This stage is for you. If you're experienced speaker or you never spoken before, just come here and uh, and uh, share your uh, your passion about. Uh, I don't know front end, uh, Angular, whatever. I I bet uh, James is always open to to invite you to the, to be here. So don't be shy and um, just 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 share your know, your knowledge. Meetup is a great 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 uh, place to start uh, to to start speaking. I I invite everyone to try. Now your questions. Okay, folks, yes. What, what can we expect from, from Angular in, in um, 2018, uh, specifically for PWA? In 2018, in last five days, I, I don't think that we have to expect uh, so much, but 2019, maybe, maybe you meant this. Uh, Specifically to PWA, I, I don't uh, know details of their roadmap. Definitely, uh, they will extend something related to push notifications. I know that, um, and there is um, like architecture doc is open. By, by, by the way, it's uh, open for uh, commenting from all, all the community how to, for example, handle notifications clicks uh, properly in Service Worker itself. So de definitely, this um, this will be continued. I think main efforts will be focused on uh, performance and uh, in particular on um, Ivy compiler. So yes, uh, it's not default in uh, version seven yet because uh, something's still on the roadmap, something's to be fixed, but uh, I believe Angular 8 will um, come very soon with uh, an Ivy as a default um, compiler, which will give us really great possibility to create uh, way smaller Angular applications, then we can uh, like say that we can, for example, build a uh, built-in Angular application as a web component to your uh, application written in any other framework or without framework at all. Now we can do this, but uh, resulting application will be a bit more uh, heavy than you maybe expect to, to be a component. I, I think uh, performance and the developer experience are two main uh, points for 2019.
More questions? Yes, please. Actually, I have two. And first of all, thanks for your talk. It was really interesting about PWA. The first one I would like to ask is like, because you're comparing Workbox and NG Service Worker, and I think it's pretty much the same style with Angular CLI. Right? Everything is very ready, easy to use, but we don't we don't get a lot of configurations. Do you see the same trend for Service Worker? Because I, um, I ran into some issues before with tree shaking because we can we can really you know configure Webpack building with Angular CLI. Do you guys have to plan to like uh, implement more features so we can fix more stuff on it? Or are you going to switch to Workbox so like you know we can do more stuff at one step? And still gain the advantage of like really easy bootstrapping service worker for our app. May, 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 yeah, maybe I should pause for the first one and let you answer first. Um, um, I'm, I'm not on the core team of Angular, so I, I, I cannot um, like uh, speak like 100% correct. But uh, I, I think 99%. I think uh, idea of uh, Angular service worker will remain the same. So you get as uh, as uh, much as possible. With the simplest way uh, possible. So I think this will remain, say, starting point for your PWA and uh, maybe uh, standard for the simple uh, use cases. If um, you plan, if, if you know that your PWA features will um, uh, like develop in time quite quite soon, maybe it's it's really good idea to start f uh, from Workbox uh, straight away. So for for the simplest uh, projects and um, yes, um, yeah, let's say for the simplest project, NGSW is a good option. If you plan to develop it further, maybe it's a good idea to start from Workbox. I, I don't think that um, uh, NGSW will change the concept to be more uh, complex in configuration, so something like this. This will always be one-liner with uh, some limited configuration of JSON. This is this is its nature. Uh, can I can I continue from the first one first? What what about migration? Let's say like along the way. Well, it's work great, but I want more feature. How how can I migrate to Worksbox? Uh, very very good question. Um, I think that uh, you can uh, re-implement everything you have in your Angular Service Worker to Workbox in one working one working day. So this is not really like a transition because uh, Angular Service Worker is, is very limited functionality. So uh, uh, yes, it's 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 really not a big deal to re-implement everything what you have in NGSW in in Workbox. So it's this will not be a huge uh, huge pain for you. I I, I promise. I promise. And the second one is like, totally not related. I'm really curious, actually. <laughs> Sorry, it's not about that. <laughs> well, it's still about Angular, because you mentioned Ivy. Yeah. And I'm really interested about one-time internationalizations. Is it coming with version 8? Do you have any insider information about that? Any interesting comments about it? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 unfortunately, I cannot tell you what's uh, under NDA, but I know that the uh, team is working hard on the uh, internalization part. I, I, I think you know that uh, there were different approaches. First, they tried to rely on uh, built-in browser functionality. Then they understood that it's not uh, it's not good enough yet, in, like on native level. This is why they implemented their own one, which was again quite limited. You have to recompile up every t uh, time for the like new language. You have to restart your app, right? So this is not best user experience. This will be fixed. Uh, I cannot uh, say you a moment of time, but uh, it's on the roadmap definitely. Good. More questions. More questions. PWA, uh, Angular, Web Platform, Oslo, Norway, Russia. <laughs> Plans for tonight. Good. Okay. Then uh, I have second prize, right? And uh, yeah, let let me let me g give it for. Uh, the best question, best uh, best two questions, I'd say. It's for you, mister. Again, I don't know what it's side. Let, let it be a surprise. Yes, it's for you. It's it's your prize. Mm. Okay, then I uh, pass the mic to, to James. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, 
ก็เดี๋ยวจริงๆมันมีอีกเซสชั่นหนึ่งนะครับแต่ผมว่าน่าจะมีบางคนอยากกลับแล้วเพราะว่ากิจกรรมต่อไปคือต้องพุชโค้ดพุช PR ที่มีเอ่อ Product Angular ในของในบริษัทนะครับซึ่งบางบริษัทอาจจะพูดไม่ได้เพราะว่ามีเรื่องกฎหมายอะไรอย่างนี้ก็เดี๋ยวขอถ่ายรูปเลยแล้วกันมีมีใครมาช่วยผมหน่อยได้ไหมมาถือป้ายแล้วถ่ายรูปด้วยกันเดี๋ยวมึงกลับนะถ่ายรูปก่อนเดี๋ยวมึงกลับนะทางนี้นะครับทางนี้ทางนี้ทางนี้นั่งนั่งนั่งนี่แหละไม่ต้องไม่ต้องมาข้างหน้าก็ได้ถ่ายรูปส่งสปอนเซอร์หน่อยโอเคเอ่อ let's this come here ไม่เห็นเห็นไหมเนี่ยบังเปล่าครับใครเห็นไหมมามามากันครับมากันเยอะแป๊บหนึ่งนะฮะเรากำลังรอสไลด์ 